Praise the Lord, everyone. It is a privilege to be here tonight to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a wonderful opportunity just to talk about the goodness of the Lord and to just give him thanks for all his blessings and his mercy. Amen, we are alive today. <clears throat> Amen, to rejoice in his goodness, in his mercy, his love, and his grace. No other one could have done this but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we owe it all to him. We owe him all the praise. We owe him all the glory. We owe him everything. And we want to give him thanks. And I, I'm delighted that you have taken the time out to just listen and to reason with us and to just help word of God as we come to you thanking God for his mercy amen praise God for you and we ask you to just tell others about this particular YouTube presentation amen that they too will find the Lord through it whatever somewhere in it God is giving a message amen and we need to spread the word thank God so want to pray father in the name of Jesus we thank you for your blessings and your mercy we give you glory tonight for your righteousness and your peace. And whatever, Lord God, you choose to say, amen through me, Lord. I pray that it will be to your glory and to your praise. I have nothing to offer, Lord Jesus. Empty me, Lord Jesus, that I may see you as the great I am, the great provider, the great one. And we glorify you tonight and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> I want to read a scripture tonight. Mark chapter 8, from verse 22. And we we'll read to verse 26. And he cometh to Bethsaida. And they having a blind man, and they bring rather a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hand again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and he saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house saying, Neither go into the town, nor te tell it to any in the town. Praise God. We thank God for these words. And we pray that as we go through, we'll see what is going on in our lives. Praise God. About a blind man. And it is not just that blind man, but all of us as blind people. Praise him. But truly one day God gave us our sight. So, spiritual blindness, even though we're looking at physical blindness of a man, it is about teaching a lesson of spiritual blindness. Praise God. And we see Jesus healing this man in stages. Obviously, there is a lesson in this. Amen. And it is not that Jesus was trying something. Because when you think of all the professionals in our time, you think of a lawyer or a physician. It's interesting that they say they're practicing medicine or they're practicing law. So they're not perfect in it. They lose cases, they lose patients. Amen. But the God we serve has never lost a case, never lost a patient. So he wasn't practicing healing. There was a point in this. Amen. And he is our advocate. He's not going to practice law to defend us. He has already done that for us. And he can do it over and over again. But here we see him doing this in stages. And on other occasions, he simply spoke the word. He simply told the ten lepers, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, praise God. Amen. We can see all kinds of things happening. One man said, you don't need to come to my house to speak the word. But here he is doing several things. We thank God for that. Amen. So 
he leads the man out of town, we can see that there is something about just taking him by himself. A lot of times we need to be alone with God. We can be in his presence to just absorb the goodness and the richness of his blessings and his mercy. Amen. We can see it as amen a moment that he is dealing with us. Amen. We can see that at one point when he asked the man, what do you see? He saw men as trees. And I'm not, I'm not sure what happened, whether he, what happened before. He's, why was he saying he saw men as trees? But that's saying something else too. We ought to see people as they are. We ought to see, the reality must be that if we see trees, we see trees. If we see men, we see men. And a lot of times if we see men as trees, we may want to treat them as trees rather than as human beings or as people or children of God. Praise God. But what we know is that Jesus Christ gave him his sight. And it's imperative that we get this. It's, and if you notice too, without seeing, you notice, for instance, he said, First, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Praise God. So, a lot of times we need another touch. Amen. We come into the church and we might just feel something and we think it's the Holy Ghost. We feel something and we think it's God that is just dealing with us and that's it. You know, we run off with it. But we realize that we need a saturation. We need the Holy Ghost in our lives. We need another touch. Amen. And you know, sometimes when you think of seasoned people, pastors and bishops and all that, just fall over sometimes. Need another touch. Every now and then we need another touch. Praise God. So physical blindness is indeed a handicap, amen, but a far more serious handicap is what? Spiritual blindness, hallelujah, amen, because we can see it is detrimental to our well-being. I notice, for instance, in Matthew 6, 23, but if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness, amen, if therefore the light that is in you is darkness. How great is that darkness? So this, this, the spiritual blindness, as I say, is far more serious than the, spirit, than the physical blindness. We see people, they are, I don't know they like to be considered handicapped, but they are so proficient, even though they're blind. People who cannot speak, they're so very proficient. People who have no legs, they are so very skillful in what they do you see them driving you see them doing things amen you know what they, they don't consider themselves handicapped praise god um so we understand that there is more to this than meets the eye praise god and more than anything else jesus came to give us our sight amen i notice in luke chapter 4 verse 8 and it said the spirit of the lord is upon me Glory to God. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he hath sent me to heal the broken heart, to set at liberty the captives, and notice the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Look at it. Recovery of sight to the blind. Amen. You can see him dealing with his own people. How blind they were that here is the Messiah. And they could not see that he is who they were expecting. They saw the miracles. They saw all the things he was doing. And they were taking tally of what was going on. But they failed to recognize him as a great I am for whatever reason. Praise God. Amen. We can see in this particular example that we read from Mark. No fewer than. Eight, nine times the word or related word seeing is emphasized. Amen. So we can see too, even when we see the first vision, notice that even those Pharisees and others, they had a distorted vision. In the same way, the man's first touch was distorted. Again, it's not that 
Jesus was practicing healing, but emphasizing something distorted. The Jews, the Pharisees, distorted vision of who he was. Look at Paul, distorted vision of Jesus Christ. But when he met him on that street, Damascus Road, he said that the scales fell off his eyes. Praise God. Hallelujah. He could see because the Holy Ghost fell upon him. Amen. We get um, Acts chapter 9 verse 18. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales and he received his sight at once and he rose and was baptized. Hallelujah. No one like Jesus can clear the eyes. No one like Jesus can give us what? Sight. Amen. That we can see clearly. We can see spiritually. We can understand his word in our lives. Amen. And it's interesting that the town folk so diligently took this man to see Jesus. A lot of times we need to be really concerned about our fellow man that we want to take them to Jesus. We want to introduce them to Jesus. We want them to understand that there is a savior who can heal them, give them sight, who can heal the brokenhearted, who can restore their lives, broken lives. And so many of us had broken lives and still have broken lives. But Jesus, the great I am, is here to see us through. Praise God. Amen. And sometimes we need to get away from the crowd. Get away from the naysayers. Get away from the other blind people that we may get another touch. That we can see Jesus in his majesty and his power. We can see him in his glory. We can see him in his riches. We can see him in his power. We can see him in the the joy and the peace that he gives. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. We can, we're can. getting away from the doubt and the hostility. Getting away a lot of times from the distractions around us in the world. Amen. This is happening and people are going to take over this. And we hear of this crisis and another crisis and disaster here. People shooting people in church. Amen. I mean, all kinds of things you need to get away sometimes and sometimes it's not just physically get away but spiritually just move out launch out into the deep hallelujah amen hallelujah you know it's important that we understand that because sometimes when you're faced with naysayers it's a kind of blocking your sight blocking your vision you remember the situation with the raising of Jairus daughter he went in and they were just taunting Jesus, so to speak, Lord, laughing at him. Amen. And you know what he did? He put them out. Took the man's uh, the, the man and disciples in with him so that he could do the work. It's not that they could hinder him, but he is given an example sometimes that you need to get rid of the naysayers. Put them out. When I say put them out, I'm talking about putting them out of the church. I'm talking about block them. You know I me mean? because we can't put anybody on the church. You know, matter we're not talking about that. Get away from them. Get away that you can be with the Lord, so you can see what He has to say to you. You can hear what He has to say to you. Amen. You want to see the joy and the peace that He has to give you. Amen. So as I said, they were laughing. So um, we can see Him also healing a man who was blind on the Sabbath day. And this particular situation had great hostility and theological controversy. What was happening here? Amen. And we're not getting into that, but we can see that they were saying, who healed you? And why is he doing on the Sabbath day? And it's interesting that when you read that particular scripture, there is one um, sentence that and it was the Sabbath day. You know that was a technical point. You know that was a serious turning point in this whole drama, so to speak, in this whole controversy. Because these people, the Sadducees and scribes and the others, they were concerned with a day. Amen. Jesus was concerned with giving sight to the blind. Jesus was concerned about healing. He was concerned about regeneration. He was concerned about life. Amen. He was thinking about preparing us for eternity. 
I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. But they were preoccupied with the day. They were preoccupied with it, all kinds of things. So we need, amen, this great God. We need to get away from all these things. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, think about it. When we talk about spiritually blind, we have in our churches, our places, we have people who will say, I can't see why this, I can't see why we're doing this, I can't see why this is happening to us. Amen. You, you know, we need a patience. Let's look at First John chapter 2, um, verse 8 to 11. I can't see why I'm doing this. I can't see all kinds of things. All kinds of naysayers everywhere. They, you, know, you don't need to be all upset about that. This happening everywhere. Every church, every building, every organization. Amen. If they can do that when Jesus was here, what do you think about this? First John chapter 2. From verse 8. Yes. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and you, because the darkness is past, and the light now shineth. He that said he is in the light and hated his brother is in darkness, even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hated his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he could, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Yes, you may have individuals in the church, and choir members, members of the board, and you hear this so often, not speaking to one another. Hate, I, 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 I'm, I'm treading that word very lightly. Hate one another. Church people. Did I say church people? I did say that. Yes. So darkness is in them. The whole body is in darkness. Because how you can, can you do that and say you love one another? No, 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 no. Amen. What these people need to be taken in stages to see Jesus for the scales to fall out of their eyes. We need to be praying and fasting for them that, that that blindness will drop off. How can you say you hate your brother? You can't have the spirit. You can't have the Lord working on the inside and say that you do that. You hate one another. Amen. We need that. That's blind relationship. When I say blind relationship... Darkness is there. Amen. There is no sense of spirituality, no sense of what God is trying to do, bring us together. Amen. And obviously the blind cannot lead the blind. A lot of times people too want to see, want to get an understanding of the word, want to see Jesus. And most of us, we prevent them. Just like they did with blind Bartimaeus. He heard that Jesus was passing through town. Here is the only source of light. Amen. And he cries out, Jesus. And what do the church people say? Shut up. Quiet. But what can they do for you? What can they do? Nothing. I mean, if they are so bent on not loving you and doing that, then they can't even pray for you. They don't have a relationship with the Lord. So here these people are telling me, shut up, don't be making so much trouble. He cried aloud, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And all that Jesus could say, bring him. Amen. What do you need? That I might receive my sight. God is ready to give sight to the blind. Amen. That was his purpose, express purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. What do you hear? And obviously the blind cannot lead the blind. They will both fall into the ditch. We need people who can see God in his power, God in his righteousness, God in his truth. And all of us, this is not incumbent on just the preacher, the pastor, the bishop, the leaders. Every single one of us must see Jesus as he ought to be seen. Amen. Take the scales off my eyes like you did for Paul. Saul, really. Lead me into the light. Lead me into righteousness and truth. Amen. He's calling us to righteousness. Amen. Praise God. So, where are you with this? He says, Jesus, um, 
it says. And I want to look at a scripture here. Yes, um, John 13, 19 to 20. And this is a commandment that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because they were, their deeds are evil. Blindness, darkness, amen, because evil lurks, you know, just like to be in, bl blind to the righteousness of God, blind to the things that are holy. And we just want to be there for every, everyone practicing evil, hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deed should be exposed. Hallelujah. So that's what even first John was talking about. Hating your brother. That cannot be a full operation in the church of God. Amen. So we need to be with God. We need to find him in his love life giving power. Amen. Um, and I like to see that when we get the, the next touch, the other touch, the another, another touch as he says, we are free from the encumbrances of life. Renew in our, we are renewing our love in him. Amen. We can see him as he, as Paul would see him, the one true love of his soul. Amen. To see him as he should be seen, our provider. He is our provider. Amen. He is our healer. We see him as our deliverer. We see him as our joy. We see him as our peace. We see him as our all in all. And we don't see him just as an itinerant preacher, just one going from one place to the other. Amen. And you know, Paul, when Paul really could see him in his majesty and his power in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 to 4, but he, he said, but if this gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Amen. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel. This is a man who was doing all kinds of crazy stuff. But when the scales shall, fell from his eyes, when he could see the power of God, when he could relate to the majesty, when he could enjoy the fellowship. Amen. He talked about it's the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, which is an image of God should shine upon them. Shine on me, Lord Jesus. We want the light to shine upon us. We want to see you in your power and your majesty. Yes, amen. And it's important that we understand, amen, that we need God. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> we need to confess him that he is Lord of all. I see you as my guide. I see you as my leader. Praise God. Amen. And this, it leads, if you think about it, um, the effect of unbelief, if you don't believe him, if you don't practice righteousness, look at what happened. Ephesians 4, 17 to 19. This I say therefore, and testify to the Lord, that he should no longer walk in the rest of your, the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Amen. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work or uncleanness and, and greediness. So you can see if you don't have the light in you, if you are blind to the things of the spirit, it will lead to darkness. It will lead to evil things. Praise God. Because, you know, he said, your word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my fire. The point is that we can see him working his will in our lives. We can see him as he is. We can see him in his righteousness and his power. Praise God. Amen. And <clears throat> Jesus, as he did for blind Bartimaeus, is passing this way. And when I say passing this way, Passing wherever we are, wherever you are, and he is available. He wants to make us whole. He wants us to see clearly. He wants our visions to be in, unfold so we can see who he is. Hallelujah. Amen. And I think so much about um, Elisha and his servant. Here we have the enemies coming to well, I suppose, capture Elisha. Amen. His servant wakes up and discovers this great army. Amen. And his 
just excited. When I say excited, obviously, in a very dangerous way, um, I'm calling on his master, 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 paraphrasing what's going on out there. And as um, Elisha was all, he, he could see God and his majesty and his power, just as Paul was talking about the glorious image of God. And what is he saying? Relax. Don't worry about that. More with us than they that, with, that be with them. Now you have to have a spiritual insight. You have to be able to see God in his provision. You have to be able to see God in his power to provide things for you. That when everything is falling apart, everyone is around you is, fall, is falling apart, you have the vision to see God in his ability in the resources available to you, in the innumerable ways he can deliver you. Amen. You have to see him as the majesty and power. Praise God. Because what you see around you, amen, when I see the natural things, they don't really move you if you have a connection with him. Because here is the servant who actually sees the natural but Elisha is seeing the spiritual more with us than they that we that be with them. Remember, even the scripture said, greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Look at one shall chase a thousand and two shall put ten thousand to flight. Look at that mathematics. Who knows how that works? One, if one can chase a thousand, probably I'd say two can pay, chase two thousand. Ten thousand to fight. So what we see is God's power his divine ability to bring to pass his work, his will in our lives. So no one is too far gone that he can't come back. But here, when the servant's eyes were open, he could really see God. Amen. The light of his power and his righteousness and his goodness. Hallelujah. Amen. When we see right, we will want to step into his word, step into his power. Amen. I want to in John 1 1 it says, If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. Amen. And not, do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we can have what? Fellowship one with another. Amen. Because we are seeing it. Amen. The people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. This light is taking us to glory. Praise him, praise him, praise him. So I want to look at another scripture, Ephesians chapter 4, 17 and 18. Ephesians 4, 17 and 18. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that he henceforth walk not as the Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Amen. The blindness of their heart. We need regeneration. We need another touch. We need scales to fall off our eyes that we can see him as he is the great redeemer, the one who alone can save us from our sins, the one who alone can give us hope, the one who alone can give us deliverance, hallelujah. He is our all in all, amen. So we can see the most important reason as I reiterate that he said, I have come to give recovery of sight to the blind, amen. Look how blind we are, or we have become. Amen. Because we fail to see. Why do I need to see this? I don't see why this is right. Sometimes you think that there are certain things in the church that the pastor will say we should be doing. I'm not talking about rules. We're talking about godly relationship. Words of God. They're for all of us. I'm not talking about something that a pastor makes up and sets of rules that He's defending himself also. I'm talking about the word of God. And some of us say, well, I don't see that. Amen. Not so blind as someone says, as those who will not see. Amen. Amen. We have become blind. 
because of the things in our lives, but Christ has redeemed us from that. And look at um, Revelation 3, 17. You know what happens? Uh, we can become so complacent. Amen. Think that we have everything covered. Blindness is a terrible thing. Yes, I'm not talking about, well, in this case, physical blindness. In contemporary society, blind people get along so well that you wonder. But I'm talking about spiritual blindness is crippling. Amen. It's set us all down to hell if we're not careful. Praise God. Revelations 3. Yes. 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art rich and miserable and poor and blind. But, you know, it will start from verse 15. Look at what it says. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou art cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of thy mouth. Amen. So spiritually blind, bankrupt, naked Laodicean, they had no resources to buy from Jesus, the gold or the things. Amen. They were pathetic in a sense. Amen. They need the grace of God. So all your riches and all that cannot bring the vision. You hear people say, well, I have a vision for the church. I have a vision for this ministry. Or I have a vision for this. Amen. And many of us don't want to tap into that because we don't see the reason for that. Amen. Jesus came and he had, not just had a vision, that was his sole purpose. And so many people couldn't see it, didn't accept it. But you know what happened? In due time, amen, he will bring to pass what he wants in our lives. And I like the song, even though the psalmist talked about, uh, in a sense, he said, Yeah, he says, if you walk in the light, it's open my eyes that I may see the wondrous things of the law. And I like that. In, um, but here's a song that I printed. It says, open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Amen. Place in my hands the wonderful key that should unclasp and set me free. Silent and now I wait for thee. Ready my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, spirit divine. Amen. What is it that you want me to see? What is it that you want me to understand? I am willing, Lord Jesus Christ, for you to open my eyes. I am grateful that you're taking me away from the crowd, from the naysayers from the doubters you're taking me out to be alone with you to know that you have the power and the grace and the love amen open my eyes that i may see i don't care what is happening around me hallelujah just like elisha's servant amen elisha wants him to understand that the god that is of Abraham and Isaac, the God who led the people through the Red Sea is still in the business of protecting, is still in the business of guiding, still in the business of consoling. Hallelujah. Sometimes we get intimidated by the things we see around us. Amen. The material things, they just engulf us. We just think we're all lost. But if we can just see him in his majesty and power, glory to God, see him as the great I am, see him as a supernatural, amen. Here he is, like Peter, we can see Peter in jail. But what does the angel do? Say, get up, put on your shoes, follow me. You see him as opening doors for you. You see him leading you out of the doldrums. Sometimes we are so broken. Sometimes we are so financially destitute. Sometimes we are so bankrupt in terms of our relationship and our families, wives and husband. Amen. You don't see a promotion on the job. 
You don't see the next mortgage coming through. You don't see that. But open my eyes that I may see the wonderful things you have for me. Open my eyes that I may see the power and the majesty of your greatness. Hallelujah. Open my eyes, Lord Jesus. I want to see you in your greatness. Hallelujah. No wonder the songwriter says, Amen, I dreamt I saw heaven. I'm not sure about the word, but someone led him and showed him this person and that person said, Oh, I want to see Jesus, the one who died for me. Hallelujah. I don't want to see Peter. I don't want to see Abraham, but I want to see Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to see him. Amen. Working in my life. I want to see him. Amen. Manifesting himself in me. I am not satisfied. Amen. Like the do in church. I want to move. I don't want to be lukewarm. I want to be hot. Glory for him. And he says, open my ears. So we want to just make a whole being accessible to the power. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth. Thou sendest clear, and while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything falls will disappear. Silently I now, I wait for thee, ready my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, spirit divine. Open my mouth, and let me hear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart, and let me prepare love with thy children, thus to share. Silently now, I wait for thee, ready my God, thy will to see. Oh, bless the Lord. Open my mouth. Illumine me, Spirit divine. I need to see your will. I need to see your grace. I need to see, amen, your healing power. I need to see your deliverance in me. And it's possible. Because he came for that. And the last verse is, open my mouth and let me hear glad of the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share. Silent and now I wait for thee. Ready my God, thy will to see. Open my mouth, illumine me, spirit divine. Thy will to see what is your will concerning me. Your will is for me to see you in your power. Your will is for me to work for you. Your will is for me to love my brother and my sister. Your will for me is that I will follow you. Amen. You have left me an inheritance and I want to claim it by the power of God. So when the naysayers come around, I am determined. I want to see Jesus. When the enemy tries to box me in, you shut him down because I want to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is not just a spiritual thing. You want to see him ultimately in his majesty, in his glory, in his righteousness, in his truth. Don't let this blindness stop you. Don't let it overwhelm you. Don't succumb to it. Hallelujah. He's bringing you out in stages your deliverance is progressive yes you see brother so and so all of a sudden he has this or is getting that don't worry about him the lord is dealing with us individually a lot of times he's too, too preoccupied with watching sister so and so she just got in the church and she's doing all this don't worry about that jesus is very personal Amen. It's not about the crowd. It's about the individual. It's about the relationship. Glory to God. Yes, we're on lockdown. And I mean, some places are total lockdown. Some places are opening up. Two states here are opening up. But it's not about the opening up or the locking down. It's about how you see God in his power in your life, in my life. So my friend, and I'm encouraging you today, Jesus is passing this way. He's passing you to give you sight. He's passing you to give you a vision of him. And you know something? When you really get a vision of him, you'll be a changed person. You cannot be the same. Glory to God. Look at Brother Saul. Different person. And you read his letters. Read whatever he said. You can see how totally 
preoccupied he was with what I mean it's just like he wanted more and more and more and more time was not there just he was just pushing pushing and no matter what the fight was he saw the power of God working in his life that's what we want to do see him amen the great I am so this is not a time to give up this is not a time to faint it's not a time to fall glory to God don't look at the army around you God is able to deliver you. Elijah was alone on Mount Carmel. When I say alone, I mean he was alone. But God, physically alone, but God was there with him. And all his prophets up there could not say the fire come down. But he saw his great God working in his behalf. Call on him. Amen. Fire came down. You got to get the fire in your life too. Yes. So you can see him. Lighten up your way. Lighten up your pathway. So you can walk in his power. Walk in his will. Walk in his purpose. Get rid of the gainsayers in your life. Get rid of the doubters in your life. And see Jesus. The only one who loves you and cares for you. God bless you today. Father, we thank you. We honor you today for your mercy and your grace. We thank you. Amen. That you are still in the blessing business. You are still in the delivering business. And without you, we are nothing. But truly tonight, Lord God, you want us to see you. In all the things that you can do for us. In all the ways you can deliver us. Oh, hallelujah, we see you, Lord God, as our hope, our all in all. Bless, Lord Jesus Christ, thy people everywhere, and keep us strong. Amen. Determine, Lord God, to live a life of holiness. Determine to follow you, because we know where we're going, because you are leading us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. So God bless you. Encourage others to tune in and you use this or your own means to help them to see Jesus as the provider the all in all God bless you What we're asking you to do is send them a link, share this service, and ask them to subscribe so that they will see the service and enjoy the fellowship and be with us. So mm -hmm. remember, this is a way to spread the gospel. We're now in an electronic age.